In February 2025, Nan Zong and his son Stanley filed a lawsuit against the University of California system alleging racial discrimination against Asian Americans in the college admissions process. Stanley Zong was no ordinary applicant. By age 18, he had demonstrated such exceptional coding prowess that Google hired him at an L4 position, typically requiring a PhD or equivalent experience. After rigorous technical interviews with five Google engineers, he created RapidSign, a free e-signing service built on AWS that was so well architected that Amazon itself recommended it as a case study. His technical abilities were undeniable. Yet when Stanley applied to 18 colleges, including five UC campuses, including Berkeley, Davis, Santa Barbara, San Diego, and UCLA, he was rejected by 16 of them. Yet this was a PhD level computer scientist. Something wasn't adding up. After being stonewalled by the UC Board of Regents, ignored by the governor, and dismissed by state lawmakers, and getting nowhere with the Federal Office of Civil Rights, the Zongs filed their lawsuit on February 11th, armed with over 100 pages of evidence suggesting UC's covert use of race in admissions, despite California's ban on affirmative action, they're seeking not just recognition of wrongdoing, but meaningful reform third-party oversight and transparency for a process that has remained a black box for too long. This story of Stanley Zong's rejections represents something far larger than one exceptional student's experience. It exposes a system that appears fundamentally biased against the entire Asian American community. So here we are in this kind of a weird situation where on one side, Google concluded that he's at the level of a PhD degree. On the other hand, the colleges are saying that he's not qualified enough for their undergraduate admission. And that kind of a story caught in attention of uh, news media. Within 24 hours, um, the story spread coast to coast and we started getting people inquiries from the East Coast, even people from uh, like Singapore. Uh, people are very curious about the story. Most importantly, I think it strikes a chord because this is not the first time that Asian community has seen such a depressing story about Asian kids getting rejected by college, even though they have outstanding qualifications. This isn't simply about confused admissions officers or isolated mistakes. The pattern is too consistent. The contrast's too stark. Asian American students are being held to a higher admission standard. In other words, this is just racism against Asians, one that actively disadvantages Asian American applicants while hiding behind vague platitudes about holistic evaluation. After Stanley's case went public and got reported in news media, um, I got a lot of emails from parents, students that uh, complained about similar cases. And one of them I remembered very vividly, um, he got rejected by all colleges that he applied to. Um, so even worse result than Stanley because Stanley at least got two. The situation is widespread. It's not one or two Asian kids. Um, it's affecting a large number of uh, Asian American applicants. Even more troubling is how institutions responded when confronted with this disparity. Rather than transparency, they offer stonewalling. Rather than accountability, they hide behind vague criteria that conveniently can't be quantified or reviewed. I want to send a message to all the Asian parents and the kids that um, don't um, freak out because your results are um, not ideal. Don't blame yourself. That's the key message because the system is rigged. It's not that you're not good enough. It's not that you're not working hard enough. It's, that not, it's not that you're not qualified enough. The system right now is not merit-based. This is perhaps the most heartbreaking aspect of this discrimination. Talented young people internalizing rejection as personal failure rather than recognizing it as systemic bias. Asian American students are left questioning their own worth, wondering what more they could have done when the real issue isn't their performance, but a system designed to limit their acceptance regardless of their achievements.
Despite overwhelming evidence, those who defend the current system often deny discrimination exists at all. The Zongzi's experience trying to address these concerns reveals not just institutional resistance, but active hostility towards those seeking change. Asian kids are hurt badly in college admission, and we have evidence after evidence, case after case, to back up that claim. So if anybody still claim that Asian kids are not hurt, in the college admission process, I'm up for a public debate anytime. And I have to send a public debate challenge to all the vocal supporters of Harvard in the SFFA versus Harvard case. These are college professors, students, activists, uh, lawyers, uh, you name it. I contacted all the ones that I can find, saying, you know, if you want a public debate, if you still claim that no Asian case is hurt, let's have a public debate. But none of them took up my challenge. As Nan mentions, the landmark Students for Fair Admissions SFFA v. Harvard case exposed precisely this pattern of systemic bias against Asian American applicants. SFFA's successful challenge against Harvard's admissions practices revealed overwhelming statistical evidence that Asian Americans were routinely penalized by subjective personal rating scores. The silence from those challenged to defend the system speaks volumes. Those who proudly advocate for the current admissions framework suddenly lose their voice when asked to justify the demonstrable harm to Asian American applicants. Their refusal to engage with the evidence suggests they know their position cannot withstand scrutiny. This silence is matched by active intimidation against those who speak up. The college campus, supposedly a bastion of free inquiry and intellectual honesty, becomes hostile territory for Asian Americans who question admissions practices. When we started talking about um, filing a lawsuit against UC, a lot of students expressed interest in joining the lawsuit because they are rejected by the UC. After they spend a few months um, as freshmen on college campuses, however, a vast majority of them dropped out. A and I can totally understand why. The college campus is loaded with hostility towards Asian American students standing up for their rights in this type of case. I think there is a widespread chilling effect on the Asian American students in this issue. I have to applaud Stanley and Nan and their courage in the face of these powerful forces. This case matters for our idea of what America stands for, equality of opportunity. It matters for future generations who deserve to be evaluated on their merits rather than be judged by their skin color. It matters for an America that claims to value fairness and opportunity for all. We can no longer accept vague explanations and secretive processes when the evidence of bias is so clear. We need third-party oversight of admissions, genuine transparency about how decisions are made, and accountability when discrimination is found. This isn't about giving Asian Americans special treatment. It's about a return to a worthy ideal of truly removing racism from our society instead of adding more in uneven ways. It's about ensuring that all students compete on a level playing field, regardless of their racial background. As this case moves forward, pay attention. Support efforts for greater transparency in admissions. Remember that discrimination against any group undermines the principles of fairness for all groups. And recognize that those who do fight these battles, like the Zong family, are doing so not just for themselves, but for everyone who believes in the promise of equal opportunity. The closed, secretive circle of college admissions must be opened, not just for the benefit of Asian American students, but the integrity of our educational system and the future of our nation.